Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. The climate guy setting the record straight about climate. In George Orwell's novel, 1984, the job of the Ministry of Truth was to rewrite history to suit the needs of the current political leadership. Rewriting U.S. history is exactly what NASA and NOAA are doing with the U.S. temperature record. Now I'm going to show you the history of how they did that. In 1999, NASA's top climate alarmist, James Hansen, wrote this paper, which lamented the fact that the United States was not warming. In fact, it had been cooling since the 1930s. He wrote, How can the absence of clear climate change in the United States be reconciled with continued reports of record global temperature? Part of the answer is that U.S. climate has been following a different course than global climate, at least so far. Figure 1 compares the temperature history in the U.S., that's here, and the world, here, for the past 120 years. The U.S. has warmed during the past century, but the warming hardly exceeds year-to-year -year variability. Indeed, in the U.S., the warmest decade was the 1930s, and the warmest year was 1934. Global temperature, in contrast, had passed 1930s values by 1980, and the world has warmed at a remarkable rate over the last 25 years. In my previous video, I showed how the global temperature record is complete garbage. It's been highly altered and manipulated over time, and coverage of stations on the planet's surface has been extremely poor historically and is still poor now. In contrast to the junk global temperature record, the United States has an extremely good temperature record with very good coverage temporally and spatially. And I'm going to show that to you now. This map shows thermometer coverage of the Earth in the year 1900. These colored squares indicate where thermometers were located at that time. You can see that the United States is completely covered, whereas many other places have very poor coverage. Let's look around at some of the other places on the Earth. There was almost no coverage in the Arctic in the year 1900. Western Europe had pretty good coverage. Asia and Russia had extremely poor coverage. Australia had poor coverage, except for a few regions near the coast. New Zealand had poor coverage. Antarctica had no coverage at all. There were zero temperature records from Antarctica in the year 1900. Africa is a huge continent with almost no coverage at all, and they still have almost no coverage there. South America also had extremely poor coverage in 1900, and they still have very poor coverage. Now let's look at the United States again. Here we are, we have this incredibly good temperature record in the United States. And James Hansen was lamenting the fact that it wasn't behaving as the terrible temperature record for the whole Earth. Given that the U.S. temperature record is so complete and excellent, and the global temperature record is so poor, the obvious thing for James Hansen to have been thinking was, what's wrong with the global temperature record, and what can we do to fix it? That's what a real scientist would have done. He would have trusted his good data set and been suspicious about the discrepancy with his substandard data set. He would have asked the obvious question, why does my excellent U.S. temperature data set show cooling and my very poor global data set show warming? But that's not what James Hansen and NASA and NOAA chose to do. Instead of fixing the broken global temperature record, they started looking for ways to alter the very good U.S. temperature record to match the broken global temperature record. Now I'm going to show you how they did this. In 1999, NASA still showed the 1930s as being extremely hot, with 1934 being by far the hottest year. In 
They showed about half a degree cooling from the 1930s to the late 20th century, with 1934 about half a degree warmer than 1998. Also note that 1998 was only the fifth hottest year, with the four hottest years coming before 1960. Now let's compare this to the current version of the same NASA temperature graph. Now they show a very different story. The period from the early 1930s to the late 1990s now shows quite a bit of warming, whereas in the earlier version they showed about half a degree warming. And also notice that 1998 is now the hottest year, hotter than 1934. Remember that in the 1999 version, it was about half a degree cooler than 1934, and it was only the fifth hottest year. Now it was the hottest year to date. So you might ask, how did they make this radical change in the U.S. temperature record? Did they find some new weather stations? And the answer is no. They're using the exact same set of stations in both graphs, but what they're doing is altering the data. Now I'm going to show you how that was done. This image compares the 1999 version of NASA U.S. temperatures in blue and the current version in red. Note that NASA's current version of the graph in red has greatly cooled the 1930s, they've greatly cooled the 1950s, and they've tremendously warmed the years since 1980. Most people assume when they see temperature graphs from government agencies like NASA and NOAA that they are an honest accounting of the underlying temperature data. But NASA has changed a 70-year-long cooling trend shown in their 1999 version of the graph into a warming trend in the current version of their graph. Now I'm going to normalize the two versions of the graph to the most recent common years in the 1990s. This shows you the magnitude of the alterations that they've made since 1999. You can see that they've tremendously cooled the 1930s and the 1950s. NASA now shows a large amount of warming from the 1880s to the late 1980s. This warming in the current version of the temperature graph is in direct contradiction with what NOAA reported in 1989, as shown in this New York Times article from January 26, 1989. U.S. data since 1895 fail to show warming trend. After examining climate data extending back nearly 100 years, a team of government scientists has concluded that there is no significant change in average temperatures or rainfall in the United States over that entire period. The study, made by scientists for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, was published in the current issue of Geophysical Research Letters. It's based on temperature and precipitation ratings taken at weather stations around the country from 1895 to 1987. This is the exact same set of temperature data which NASA is currently using in the graphs that now show warming. So in 1989, NOAA said that there'd been no warming in the U.S. since 1895. Let's compare this with their current temperature graph. Now NOAA shows a lot of warming during that same interval. This change from no warming to a lot of warming isn't due to new thermometer data. They're using the same set of thermometers that they did in 1989. What's different is that they've just altered their own data. Now I'm going to show you the alterations which NOAA makes to the U.S. temperature record. The blue line here is just the average temperature at all of their 1,200 stations. It shows that the 1930s was the warmest decade, and there's been general cooling since then. But the red line is what they report to the public. It shows a lot of warming, and they've tremendously cooled the past to produce this warming, and they've also increased recent temperatures. If they were accountants, this would be called cooking the books.
This graph shows the alterations which NOAA is making to the U.S. temperature record. This is the zero line here. You can see that recent temperatures are being adjusted upwards and past temperatures are being adjusted greatly downwards by almost 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit. They've created a hockey stick of warming by altering the data. This graph has years on the x-axis and temperature adjustment on the y-axis. Now I'm going to show you a different view of the same data. Now I'm plotting atmospheric carbon dioxide on the x-axis versus temperature adjustment on the y-axis. We see something remarkable. There's a linear trend here. What NOAA is doing is they're adjusting the data exactly to match the increase in carbon dioxide. This is the ultimate confirmation bias junk science. Instead of altering their theory to match the data, what they're doing is they're altering the data to match their carbon dioxide theory. These alterations are very disturbing, but what's equally disturbing is that a lot of the NOAA data is simply fabricated. Let me explain. There are about 1,200 temperature stations around the U.S. which NOAA uses. A certain percentage of them don't report temperatures every month. Back in the 1970s, this was about 10% of them, but now it's getting up over 40%. There's been a huge increase in stations which are not reporting every month. What NOAA does when that happens is they use computer models to fabricate temperatures for the missing data. When I confront NOAA about these alterations, they say they're doing them for good reason. They say that current temperatures really are hotter than the 1930s. Well, there's easy ways to test that out. What I've plotted here is the average percentage of days over 95 degrees at all of the 1,200 stations which NOAA uses. You can see that 95 degree days used to be very common in the U.S. in the 1930s. In fact, in 1936, almost one day out of 10 in the U.S. was over 95 degrees. This is just unbelievable by modern standards. We don't see heat like that anymore. We can also see that the 1950s had a lot of 95 degree days, but now they've become very rare. There's been a huge decrease in the frequency of 95 degree days in the U.S. So no, the 1930s was much hotter than present temperatures. The NOAA temperature adjustments are fake. They're junk science. Like Orwell's Ministry of Truth, NASA and NOAA are rewriting U.S. history to meet the needs of politicians. What they're doing is cooking the books. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.